Imagine standing in a store, eyeing that sleek gadget or fashionable outfit you've been dreaming about. You reach for your wallet, knowing that a credit card could make that dream a reality with a simple swipe. But here's a question that might cross your mind. Do you need an income to be approved for a credit card? It seems like a straightforward query, but the answer is layered with nuances and intricacies that could surprise you. Let's delve into the world of credit cards, where the intersection of financial opportunity and responsibility is at its most delicate balance. The traditional notion is that having a steady income is essential for credit card approval. After all, credit card companies want to ensure that you have the means to pay back what you borrow. This idea forms the bedrock of responsible lending and borrowing. However, the reality is more complex and opens up several avenues for those without a regular income to still access credit. First, let's understand why income matters. Credit card issuers assess your ability to repay borrowed funds by examining your financial stability, typically through your income. A stable income suggests that you can manage monthly payments and are less likely to default. This risk assessment protects both the lender and the borrower, fostering a healthy financial ecosystem. But what if you don't have a traditional income, like a salary from a 9 to 5 job? Does that close the door to credit cards entirely? Not necessarily. In the modern financial landscape, the definition of income has expanded. Credit card issuers recognize that income can come from various sources. It's not just about a paycheck from an employer anymore. If you receive regular payments from investments, rental properties, pensions, or even allowances from family members, these can count as income. The key is regularity and reliability. When applying for a credit card, you can list these alternative income sources, providing documentation to support your claims. This broader perspective on income allows more people to qualify for credit cards, reflecting the diverse ways in which people earn money today. Students, for example, are a significant group, often without substantial income. Credit card companies offer student credit cards, which are designed to help young adults build credit history while they are still in school. These cards typically require proof of student status and may have lower credit limits. The idea is to provide a financial tool that promotes responsible credit use without demanding a traditional income. Similarly, stay-at-home parents may rely on their spouse income. Recent changes in regulations allow them to include household income on their credit card applications, recognizing their contribution to the household economy. But what if you have no income at all? Are there still options for you? The answer is yes though the path might be slightly different. Secured credit cards present a viable option for those without income. A secured credit card requires a cash deposit that serves as collateral and sets your credit limit. For instance, if you deposit $500, that amount becomes your credit limit. This arrangement reduces the risk for the issuer since they can claim the deposit if you fail to pay your bill. Using a secured credit card responsibly can help you build a credit history eventually qualifying you for a traditional unsecured credit card. Authorized user status on someone else's credit card is another strategy. By becoming an authorized user on a family member's or friend's account, you can benefit from their credit history and potentially improve your credit score. While you're not the primary account holder, responsible use and timely payments can reflect positively on your credit report. It's crucial, however, to have a clear agreement with the primary card holder to avoid misunderstandings and financial strain. Credit card issuers also look at factors beyond income. Your credit score, debt-to-income ratio, and overall financial health play significant roles. A high credit score indicates that you've managed credit well in the past, even if your income is modest. Conversely, a low debt-to-income ratio suggests that you're not overburdened by debt, making you a safer bet for lenders. Building and maintaining a good credit score can sometimes compensate for lower income, enhancing your chances of approval. Let's not forget the role of cosigners. If you lack sufficient income or credit history, having a cosigner with a solid financial background can bolster your application. The cosigner agrees to take responsibility if you default on payments, providing assurance to the credit card issuer. This arrangement can be beneficial, but requires a high level of trust and clear communication between both parties as the cosigner's credit is also at stake. Technological advancements and changing regulations continue to reshape the credit card approval landscape. But fintech companies are developing innovative approaches to credit assessment, sometimes focusing on cash flow analysis 
rather than traditional income metrics. These companies may evaluate your bank account activity, savings, and spending patterns to determine your credit worthiness. This shift recognizes the fluid nature of modern income streams and offers more inclusive access to credit. Moreover, specific credit cards are designed for those with no credit history or low income, known as subprime credit cards. These cards often come with higher interest rates and fees, but can be a stepping stone towards building a credit history. They serve as a reminder that credit is a tool to be used wisely. High fees and interest rates mean that paying off your balance in full each month is crucial to avoid costly debt. It's also essential to address the psychological aspect of applying for a credit card without an income. The fear of rejection can be daunting, but understanding the range of options available can empower you. Knowing that alternative income sources, secured cards, authorized user status, and cosigners are viable paths can alleviate some of the stress. Each application process offers learning experiences, helping you better understand the credit system and how to navigate it effectively. In summary, while traditional income plays a significant role in credit card approval, it is not the sole determinant. The evolving financial landscape offers various pathways to access credit, even without a regular paycheck. From recognizing alternative income sources and secured credit cards to leveraging co-signers and becoming an authorized user, there are multiple strategies to consider. Understanding these options and using credit responsibly can open doors to financial opportunities, regardless of your income situation. So, do you need an income to be approved for a credit card? The answer is more nuanced than a simple yes or no. With the right approach, documentation, and understanding of the credit system, you can navigate the complexities of credit card approval and find a solution that fits your financial circumstances. This journey is not just about acquiring a piece of plastic. It's about building a foundation for your financial future, one informed step at a time. As you contemplate your next move, remember that the world of credit is not just black and white. It's filled with shades of possibilities that cater to diverse financial situations. By staying informed and proactive, you can unlock the potential of credit cards, using them as tools to build and enhance your financial well-being. The path may not always be straightforward, but with determination and knowledge, you can chart a course towards financial empowerment and stability.